So these are the aspects or the sort of this concept of natural selection, right? You got to have variation, with, which sometimes is mutation, genetic change spontaneously happens. Um, nat nature selects uh, who will survive based on which have adaptations, traits that help them survive, survival of the fittest, right? So nature chooses who's going to survive depending on who's best equipped to survive. Duh, right? And the ones that survive will have babies for the next generation. Duh. And after many generations, any changes, any variations in that population will accumulate. And the species can change over time. Now, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen here. Today, I'm going to teach like two examples of uh, where this has been observed, you know, just happening, right? And, you know, real situations. And it might be next week. It might be the week after. I haven't quite got it chonked out quite yet. But what I always do whenever I give a test on this subject, the test question, the main essay question is explain how natural, natural selection works by telling the story of, in this case, it's going to be the boll weevil and the peppered moth. And I'm going to do both of these. If you want to, after it goes through, you know, you're, you're going to want to write it down. Uh, then you can use it on the test. You may do that. I think I'm going to have you write it down following each of these. But there's going to be a bigger points situation where you have to explain it. Now, you're luckily, you know, at home, you know, I'll let you use notes. But uh, in the classroom, normally you wouldn't even get to use notes. Okay, so here goes. First one I'm going to talk about. This is a, a situation, a problem all farmers are familiar with. Uh, it's called insecticide resistance. So what happens then is uh, if a farmer uses insecticides, the nat natural selection, the bugs that will be killed by that insecticide will develop a resistance through naturalization. Now, it's not just they, they get yeast. Uh, naturalization, natural selection. It's not that they get used to it. It's not kind of like, oh, I'm going to take the poison until I become immune. No, 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 no. It's at over multiple generations, okay? And sometimes it can happen within just a few generations. This is also happens with herbicides if you try to control weeds. It also happens with bacteria, like diseases from antibiotics. This situation of natural selection, which is just the world we live in, is very real. Okay, and so insecticide resistance. I'm going to tell you the story of the boll weevil. Okay, so this is a boll weevil. Um, I could have chosen uh, mosquitoes, uh, resistance like malaria mosquitoes. They become resistant to insecticides like uh, DDT. There's a lots of lots of lots of different kinds of pests, aphids, crickets, you know, anything you're trying to control. This is something that can certainly happen and does. But this, the boll weevil, is a uh, pest that particularly attacks cotton. So cotton crops like in Texas or Mississippi or down south where they grow a lot of cotton, uh, they have problems with the boll weevil. And the boll weevil can get in their cotton crop and ruin it and the farmer goes broke. Okay, so I'm going to draw some pictures kind of representing this. So bear with me. Uh, yeah, it'd probably be a good idea to draw the pictures too for memory's sake. Okay, I'm going to teach it kind of the same way I would under the dot cam or the overhead projector in the classroom. And so what happens then, let's say you have a farmer's crop. Let's just say this represents the crop of cotton, okay? Or it could be corn with a different pest, whatever. But in this case, since it's the boll weevil, let's call it cotton. And this represents the bugs that are in that crop, okay? Okay. Well, you know, farmers for, well, you can read about it in ancient scriptures and stuff, how, you know, there were plagues of locusts and, and insects basically really can decimate a crop for uh, a farmer. It's a very sad thing if the farmer's trying to make a living and scratch by. But there was an invention in the 1930s of an insecticide called DDT. All right, DDT. And so... And there was also this thing called crop dusting because they invented the airplane, you know, in the uh, late teens and early 20s, about 100 years ago. And you had after World War One, and, you know, up into, into the 30s, these people became crop dusters where they would fly their plane over the field and spray the field with insecticide. And they go and they fly their plane over 
here's the plane, you know, flying over, and it drops the insecticide. Now, the insecticide was very effective, and it killed most of them, right? And so the farmer, he's like, instead of losing 30% of his crop, he only loses 5% of his crop. He goes, wow, that's great. Now, what an awesome thing. So let's do that again next year. But think about this. Here's the one, the deal. The ones that get killed are the ones that are particularly vulnerable to DDT. There's variation in that population, either through genetic mutation or just natural variation. And for whatever reason, some of these are less susceptible to being killed by the DDT. They have a gene or whatever, a trait of slight resistance to that insecticide. So who's going to lay the eggs and have the babies for the next year? These guys, the resistant ones. So the variation has been selected for, they get to pass it down to the next generation. And so the next year, they have the offspring of the resistant ones are the ones that are in the crop. So what do you think is going to happen when the airplane flies by the next year? And drops the insecticide. Well, it's going to kill some of them, but they have more resistance. So more of them are going to survive. And so, hey, wait a second, last year, you know, they only got 5%. This year, they got 10%. And so, you know, it's like uh, after a couple of years of doing this, the ones that had the resistance, but the more resistance tended to survive more. So the farmer's like, wait, let's up the dose. So they get bigger and bigger uh, doses of the insecticide. And meanwhile, the boll weevil is getting more and more resistant to the insecticide, right? And so finally, you know, they spray and it doesn't kill any of them. They have developed resistance, okay? Resistance. And the same thing can happen, by the way, to bacteria, to antibiotic medicine, medications. The same thing happens with multiple different types of insects have developed resistance. Uh, the mosquito is another really good example you can use. Um, the, the aphid is another one. And so this concept of developing of resistance, remember, it happens generation after generation. It isn't like the bugs have said, oh, no, I'm going to be become resistant. It's like the ones that happen to have that resistance trait will pass it on. And since they're the ones that survive more, they're the ones that reproduce more and have more babies. So pretty soon the entire population is resistant. And it can become more and more and more resistant, okay? To where the DDT doesn't even hurt them at all, right? And so there's things that farmers have to do, like alternate what kinds of insecticides, try to come up with other methods of, of catching the bugs, like sticky traps, or sometimes they might even use, like for aphid control, they'll use like ladybugs, you know, which is a biological control. You got to be careful with that a little bit too. But um, there, this idea of resistance is natural selection. It is very, very real in the world we actually live in. It's not theoretical. Well, it is theoretical, but it's also factual, okay? So there's an example of resistance, the boll weevil. Next is coming up the peppered moth.